Barcelona. So happy to see you all here, guys. My name is Maxim. I'm from Norway. Fortunately, no snow at the moment there. Uh, so who of you were on the first Angular camp? You are super. <laughs> so what's uh, my today's agenda? Uh, we'll go through Angular material too, but first we'll uh, tell a bit um, about what is material design itself, then uh, we'll uh, remember uh, what's the status of uh, current version of Angular material, and then we go into newest version, material two, Angular material two. Yeah, so uh, first I want to mention that uh, I'm here all three days, so it's really hard to pack all the information uh, into 30 minutes, so if you have any questions about Angular 2, about uh, Angular Material 2, about uh, Angular Fire 2, so uh, about everything with Postfix 2, you are welcome. I'm, I'm here somewhere around all, all three days. Yeah, thank you guys for inviting me, David and uh, Johannes. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, why, why do I talk about uh, these newest uh, products which are often alpha or in, in dev or beta? Because I work in a special team uh, in my company, my company call, called Fordrock and we develop a digital identity platform. So I work in a special team mm, called CTO team and we develop uh, not main products, but proof of concepts for our future products. And uh, that's why I have to deal with the newest frameworks, newest libraries, newest uh, paradigms, newest everything. So just to test it, to validate ideas, to create uh, proof of concepts, uh, to create uh, short demos. And Angular, uh, this Postfix 2 works pretty perfect for me in that sense. Uh, Angular 2, Angular uh, Fire 2, everything. Also, I run uh, my local uh, community in uh, Oslo. We are more than 800 people. It's crazy uh, number for tiny Oslo. And uh, this November, I organize a conference called Mobile Era. This is our uh, website. And uh, we have mobile web as a separate track. So if you want to join in November, uh, November 3rd and 4th, you are welcome. C uh, call for papers is uh, open, so you know what to do. Yeah, also you can uh, follow me. I would uh, be happy to see you as uh, followers at my Twitter. I tweet mostly about uh, Angular, about uh, web development, uh, about progressive web apps. And also I'll tweet uh, links to slides and repos of today's talk, so it's pretty useful. So enough about me, enough uh, this shameless announcement. Okay, so first, what is material design? But, but uh, first, uh, don't jump there. <laughs> who, who uses uh, material, an Angular material one? Nice, I'm in the same list actually uh, for Something uh, really fast uh, in terms of development. I always start with uh, Angular 1.5 and uh, Angular Material 1. Mm. How that's appeared, this material design? So Google often was blamed for awful designs and the uh, user experience of uh, its products. And uh, in June 2014, they introduced uh, this new design language. It's, uh, it's really something global, something generic. I'm sorry, I'm a bit ahead of this. Hopefully this will. Uh, yes, so it's kind of, um, answer of Google for all these comments about uh, 
not so cool design of, uh, of products, services. And commonly it's, uh, so, so we have uh, really nice uh, design principles from old days uh, on, one, on the one hand, and we have all the new technologies, uh, all the new web standards, all the new possibilities the web gives us on the other hand. And uh, mixing this together, we have um, the language called material design. It's based on three main principles. Mm, first, it takes some uh, ideas from uh, physical world. Uh, it's definitely not so skirmorph like uh, all these uh, Apple designs, so no reason to mimic uh, some surface, sur surfaces, uh, materials, or uh, lights or shadows from, from real world, but we use everything for meaning. So we help people to understand, uh, for example, uh, hierarchy of, of the components on the screen using this different, um, for example, uh, sh shadows. Next, as I told, uh, from, for example, print design, we have super nice ideas uh, from, from, from the old years. Uh, how to create, for example, our typography really clean and, uh, again, meaningful. That's why uh, material design embraces best practices from print design, but again, not for something uh, catchy and uh, just sexy fonts, no, no, no. Everything uh, about meaning. So we use uh, this, uh, for example, typography system uh, for uh, organizing hierarchy on uh, our page. And last, for sure, in, uh, on the web, we have nice possibilities to animate. And again, animation provides meaning here. So by uh, some slight animation, slight and non-obtrusive, we help user to understand, for example, where focus at the moment and uh, also give nice visual feedback when, uh, for example, we click the button. Again, it's animation, not just because of animation, not because we, we just can, can do it. Uh, for now, material design specification consists of uh, more than 20 components and uh, descriptions, specifications are pretty detailed. Uh, so you just, you just can, uh, take this specification and uh, implement your, your own framework. And um, for sure, it, uh, it takes some effort uh, from you to create all these uh, kind of requirements, all these recommendations. And uh, you can say, okay, we have this uh, design language and what's next, will uh, all our sites and uh, web application will look the same, for example, like was at uh, post bootstrap era when you know you open some random web page and you see all oh, this uh, bluish glow, this uh, uh, shadows, everything from totally recognizable from, from the bootstrap framework, uh, from this super famous one. No, 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 we have really nice possibilities for customizing and since I told these are just principles. So you, in common, you are free to build your components and they will look totally different. So these are just some examples. Mm, so mostly, uh, so here it's mostly kind of skinning, but um, again, we are free to create something really um, customized and it will follow material design if we follow these specifications. Okay, but what if uh, we don't want to spend our life to create in this UI controls? We have some, something ready for us to use. For sure, there are some implementations. Uh, material UI, it's from React world. Uh, it's just uh, really well written uh, React components following these um, recommendations, specifications. Materialize, it's um, again UI library, but it's not binded to any, any framework. You can use it 
is your framework of choice. Same with Material Design Lite, uh, with the only difference, Material Design Lite is developed and supported by, by Google. Mm, and Material Lite, uh, I, 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 as I remember, th these are some guys from, uh, from one of the universities, so this is totally open source. Well, what about Angular? For sure, we have, we have this, uh, it's called reference implementation of um, material design, and it's, uh, it's really nice. It's really high-quality high um, library. Definitely, it's performant. We don't want for our UI to ruin all the user experience. We can uh, customize it in many different ways. First, of course, uh, colors, but since um, these are just uh, kind of s specifications and uh, everything is accessible to change through their CSS, we are free to do any, any experiments, but it's uh, important to remember that we have to follow this uh, specification to have our app called Material Designed App. Um, it's nicely supported by most of uh, operation system, browsers, hardware, so it's pretty cross-platform as uh, responsive application uh, can, can be. For us, for developers, we are happy that it's well documented. It could be uh, better, and hopefully for the new version it will be much more Im improved. But still, uh, I don't. I, I I never met any issue uh, with finding some uh, information about uh, how to use specific component. And last but not least, actually I just placed it on the bottom just to have this fire mind. Uh, no problem to do localizations and accessible. It's just uh, our mini, mini topic for today. Uh, hopefully we'll have some time to discuss it. Well, it's uh, mostly about uh, Angular Material 1. Of course, everything applied for 2, but still, Ah, these are just some, uh, some examples. This is a uh, kind of reference app. This is the uh, second one, just to show you that uh, we are not binded to this type of fonts, to this type of uh, paddings, whatever. So we can create pretty differently looking applications just using Angular material. And the uh, last project I've seen uh, created with uh, Angular plus Angular material is a new Google fonts, so if you Use some uh, web fonts for your projects. I bet you've seen this. Well, let's move to Angular Material 2, our main topic. It's uh, still alpha. Uh, they have pretty nice and pretty empty website, uh, material.angular.io, so they went the same way. They created a um, separate um, website for version 2, as you remember, uh, the version one uh, is at material.angularjs.org, so don't mess with it. Fortunately, it's just one, one page there at the moment. And there, there are 14 components, actually. So you see 15 uh, packages at NPM, and one of them, uh, one of them is uh, core, so we have 14 components. And Yesterday, just before I jumped the plane, I've got this. They released to uh, new alpha, so I spent some uh, hours uh, to update my code, to retest everything, so hopefully my demo will, will work today. And you know, uh, we are really on um, bleeding edge, so after I landed, I've seen the message that uh, Angular 2 released uh, release candidate uh, 4. So, but my code still uses uh, RC3 for stability. What's new there? Of course, it uses Angular 2 under, under the hood, and um, that's what we all expect. More components, not so 
not now at the moment, but the uh, team of Rangular Material 2 has plans on creation um, kind of more rich components, for example, rich text editor, for example, uh, some data grids. Um, testing, I uh, will have special slide about this. Uh, guys are really cool at, at this. Documentation for us, for developers. Now it's uh, super minimalistic, but anyway, you can get a clue of uh, some uh, essential features. And uh, really, really important and uh, cool thing. Uh, finally, you will have nice uh, APIs, nice uh, functions, nice everything to build your own components. Uh, so no reason to wait uh, for uh, official team will uh, release something or no, no reason to surf the web, trying to find some, uh, I don't know, no, non-standard panel and finally uh, spend uh, time to testing and debugging it, you will have really nice tools for doing your, for making your own components. We'll see at it a bit detailed. So what I mean about better testing, uh, everything is possible including uh, screenshots testing, so Angular Material team is really keen on um, this part of uh, their job. They do a lot of testing and um, they make and uh, hopefully will open source really nice um, tools for testing, including screenshots. Performance is, uh, is the key and uh, as I heard, uh, from um, uh, Kara Erickson and Jeremy Elborn uh, speech at ng-conf. They test uh, performance and uh, compare not only just the uh, previous version and current version of their component, but uh, even they compare the speed of Angular material component and other library component. It, I think it's, it's really cool, so we'll have some, some interesting numbers at, at the moment. And definitely accessibility. So now it's uh, under under development. Some some things are available, uh, but it's uh, one of key features we don't have to forget about. What I mean by component toolkit. So Angular Material team just uh, realized that they do much job about non actually material design stuff and not even maybe just visual stuff. They do some uh, kind of foundation job. Uh, mm, they write some foundation code uh, under their components for they look and behave co correctly. And finally they uh, decided to kind of expose all these uh, APIs and functions to us developers so we can take something they already uh, created and build our own ones. So what, what I'm talking about, for example, uh, overlays. These are super generic uh, things uh, like panels, uh, dialogues. So we use it um, intensively on our applications. And uh, you know, each time we have to care about uh, screen placement, about how it behaves uh, during resize, how it uh, interacts with uh, user focus, how it interacts um, with um, changing of uh, our viewport, and also accessibility. So, so why don't just take uh, some already predefined uh, practices, functions, and, and use it? And uh, sooner or later, we will be able to do it. Same with uh, gestures, um, no, no need to write our own libraries or um, plug in third party ones. Uh, as I heard, uh, they use uh, Hammer.js, which is kind of um, de facto standard for, for gestures on um, our devices. Some nice helpers, utilities for uh, responsiveness to create um, applications that uh, flows uh, well on um, different screen sizes. Again, accessibilities. And uh, 
more things like, um, like for example, virtual scroll, like uh, managing uh, user selection, and it could be, for example, multiple selection, and testing. What I told uh, many times today, accessibility. Um, sometimes it's boring for us to do, for us developers to spend extra time on, uh, on things uh, that are not just clearly visible for, for us, that uh, doesn't make sense for, for us. So we, we did some job, we checked the screen, nothing happens, no new, no new cool features. But we, have, we don't have to forget about uh, many people with uh, different kinds of um, disabilities, and uh, it's just uh, must have feature for uh, all modern web applications, and uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, the fact to think you have to care about. Fortunately, uh, following uh, modern practices and uh, using modern frameworks like Angular Material, we are almost free of extra job doing it. Um, so, just one specific part of uh, accessibility, um, this standard called ARIA, Accessibility for Rich Internet Applications. What's, what's this? So we are, we are, uh, as developers, can create some really cool UI components, and um, these are not just, say, inputs or selects, of course. These are just sets of uh, spans, divs, uh, whatever, HTML tags. And non-visual uh, browsers, like, uh, like screen re readers, they don't uh, have any sense uh, what's this component about. So, ARIA is just a way to map all our crazy amount of uh, UI controls to some specific roles they have, like, like role button, role uh, input, role menu, role whatever. And uh, fortunately, using uh, Angular Material, uh, we are kind of free of uh, setting this role manually, so we, we just use like input from um, this library or button from this library and uh, everything done uh, under the hood. Furthermore, if we, for, for some cases, of course, uh, we have to specify um, a bit more explicitly what's this control about and uh, some maybe some texts uh, for screen readers. And in that case, if we uh, uh, forgot to do it, uh, Angular material will remind us by warnings in in the console. Yeah, so just uh, some minutes left. Resources. This demo I will show you just in one minute uh, on my GitHub. And of course, this two must, must have links. Something went wrong. Internet, probably. Come on. Are you live? Yeah. Hmm. So finally it's here. Yeah, so these two must have links for learning of Angular material too. S okay, enough. Enough slides. Let's see the magic. Um, let me do the mirroring, nice. Hey man. Mm -hmm. So we don't need full screen anymore. some resize. So this is pretty much application I've created. Let's just go shortly, really shortly through the code. 
So you, you remember that uh, cornerstone of uh, Angular 2 is a component, and uh, Angular material, both one and two, is about components. So you, you feel the, the love between these this two. Um, everything starts with uh, adding um, uh, correct path to CLI build, and uh, for this demo I used uh, Angular CLI, another pretty pretty tool. I, I bet someone will uh, present about this. Uh, and we have to provide some some paths like this. So we will uh, export pretty much everything. Next, we have to point to our module system, which is uh, system JS, where to which which components uh, to take, and uh, it's done. Uh, in a pretty smart way, it's just uh, list everything and uh, create a array of with these packages. Yes, but it, this just all um, kind of, kind of bo boilerplate system things. Okay, let's have a look at our component. Uh, as many things in Angular 2, we are forced to do kind of explicit listing of what we are going to use. And uh, I think this is, this is nice because um, we always think about uh, optimizing of our application just, just from, from the beginning. Mm, so we don't import a whole library. We import uh, one by one, so we just take some Angular 2 directives, or Angular material to directives, and uh, list them as directive, as regular. Okay, let's have a look at uh, how component template looks like. Uh, yeah, it's, I think uh, it's, it looks pretty familiar for you who, use, who uses uh, um, Angular Material 1, so yes, again, um, special HTML tags started with MD dash, and uh, so for example, here uh, for an app component for this wrapper, I use uh, navigation, so I wrap everything uh, into layout. I uh, created this menu uh, using um, one more component from um, Angular Material 2 called nav list, and uh, I have toolbar, and uh, you see that uh, for sure, as, as in regular Angular 2 template, we are free to use any events binding, any expressions, so everything works. So here I use um, button with icon, uh, so, so how to create this type of button, we just take regular button text, so just uh, just regular one, not, there is no MD button, no, no reason to have it. Uh, and uh, let me show you, for example, this floating action button works. It just shows uh, feedback form on top of uh, our layout, how that works. So we have MD card hidden with this variable specified uh, on our code, just uh, the simplest Boolean variable, and uh, again, our floating action button has simplest possible event uh, binding. We just toggle this variable, so everything is pretty, pretty simple and obvious. Same for, say, uh, lists, so for list of places, so this is how menu works and many possibilities to, to customize everything. So we have uh, best places, so it's just a list of our side things. We can uh, mark someone, something like visited. Let's have a look at templates. So we have uh, places where we load uh, our data from regular services. It's just static JSON at the moment. Mm -mm -mm, nothing uh, interesting here. Uh, and uh, here, this is just a 
cycle and G4 for uh, we list our place place components. So the places are list places single component and here we have some uh, Angular material to sync. So it's again it's pretty similar to what we have in uh, Angular material one. So it it just works, and uh, as I told, many possibilities to customize things. And since these are just uh, a set of controls, we are, we can create our own layout for this. So f I just used some uh, super minimalistic uh, styling. So my my uh, idea was to show you that how how it looks without almost without uh, external. Uh, Styling, and that looks more or less nice. So, but as I told, we can customize pretty much everything. Uh, what's next? How the form looks like? Um, so we list explicitly again all the directives we are going to use, and the uh, template looks pretty similar to what we have for Angular. Material one. Mm, I think this is pretty much all what I go was going to tell you. Mm, I was going to demo screen, how screen reader works with, for example, forms, and, uh, but I'm not sure. Do we have sound connected? Should work? Okay, let, let's just uh, spend our last minute for this funny, funny stuff. Our form. QR code in one HTML template. To enter the web editor, press Control Option Shift down arrow. Name edit text. You are currently on a text field inside of HTML content. To enter text in this field, type. To exit this web area, press Control Option Shift up arrow. Cool. at gmail.com selected. You are currently on a text field inside of HTML. S A L N R K O V at gmail. I agree with terms. Mixed checkbox. You are currently on a checkbox inside of HTML content. To select or deselect this checkbox, press Control Option Space. Voice over off. Okay, so this is the interesting case. So this are just pretty uh, gen general inputs, but this uh, nice uh, checkbox, so see it's completely customized, it has nice animations, but screen reader uh, still understand how to deal with this thanks to ng area. And uh, it's kind of common practice for all the UI components, we have to map them to specific and limited set of roles each screen reader what to, know, to do with. That's it from me for today. I'm here, thank you very much.